Welcome to 2025. Unfortunately, climate change didn't go away. Instead, the situation is worse now than ever before. A year ago, I told you why I'm worried about climate change. It's because I suspect that climate scientists are systematically underestimating how fast it'll get warmer. If that was so, we'd have far less time to get the energy transition done, which, let's be honest, is already going about as smoothly as a toddler trying to assemble IKEA furniture. The reason I began to worry about this is that I have misgivings. Of course I have. I have misgivings about the way that climate scientists have been making their predictions. A few years ago, they threw out the models that predicted the steepest warming trend by finding some argument for why the most alarming predictions can't possibly be true. Of course, they say that this argument is just sound science, but I'm afraid they just want to get rid of bad news as much as everyone else. What do the data say? In the past two years, the global average surface temperature has been on the upper limit of the expectations. It's not yet a huge discrepancy with the models. It could be just a natural fluctuation rather than a trend. It could just go away. But climate scientists are increasingly confused about what's going on. This was well illustrated by a show of hands at the meeting of the American Geophysical Union in Washington in December. NASA climate scientist Gavin Schmidt asked how many agree that we have understood the anomalies in 23 and 24 with all of the information that has been presented here and that exists elsewhere. According to Axios, only a smattering went up. Instead, the overwhelming majority backed the position that a sufficient explanation hasn't been offered and more research is needed. There is something to explain and there are still work to do, Schmidt said. There's been a lot of talk about how the decrease in pollution from ship emissions contributed to the warming because such pollution helps to reflect light back into space and keeps Earth cool. However, several independent studies have found that the effect from declining ship emissions isn't large enough to explain what's going on. It's a similar story with other contributing factors that climate scientists looked at. Volcano eruptions and so. They all contribute, but add them all up and it doesn't explain the observations. So what's going on? Just briefly after this conference, a new study partly offered an explanation. This is an analysis from data from NASA and ECMWF. The authors found that the major reason that global temperatures sparked so high in 2023 was that Earth reflected less sunlight than expected. They say that this is because of a substantial decline in low-hanging clouds. They speculate that we might be seeing the first signs of the changes in cloud cover due to rising temperatures. One year of data isn't enough to infer a trend so maybe the changes in the 2023 cloud cover are just coincidence or maybe there's something wrong with their data or their data analysis or with the inherent limitations of our cognitive frameworks for apprehending intersubjective constructs within a socially negotiated reality. But if they're right, this is very bad. This is because the reaction of clouds to an increase of temperature is the major reason why the predictions from climate models disagree so much. Loosely speaking, high-hanging wispy clouds trap heat and speed up warming. Low-hanging fluffy clouds reflect more light and counteract warming. If this new study is right and it's a trend rather than a fluctuation that we see fewer low-hanging clouds, then the changes in cloud cover will accelerate global warming. But since this is exactly what I worried about in my video a year ago, I want to warn you that this video might be less Cassandra and more confirmation bias. So what's next? The coming year has a good chance to break temperature records again. If you remember, Earth has a quasi-periodic oscillation called the El Nino Southern Oscillation, ENSO, that swings back and forth every few years between 
between one phase that's somewhat warmer on average, that's the El Niño phase, and then a somewhat colder phase, that's La Niña. 2023 was in one of the warm phases. Middle of last year, NOAA predicted the warm phase would transition to the colder one in late fall. But they've continuously updated that prediction and now say that we'll likely remain in an intermediate neutral phase at least throughout the summer of 2025. And if a colder phase will come at all, it'll likely be a short one. This isn't unusual. You can see in this figure that similar things have happened multiple times in the past decades. But it does mean that it's unlikely we'll see a significant cooling this year. The best metaphor for our reaction to climate change I can think of is that we're like people on a sinking sailing boat fighting about who gets to climb up the mast. We're so worried about international competition, about where we are compared to everybody else. We don't notice that the boat is sinking. But that's what's happening. We're pushing climate zones into different regions too fast for most species to adapt. And we're basically begging for a mass extinction. But don't worry, I'll be reporting all through the apocalypse, so don't forget to subscribe. Yes, I've made a New Year's resolution. It's to focus less on what's going wrong and more on what's going right. And I want to start right here and now by telling you about Planet Wild, a crowd-funded nature protection group that I joined last year. Planet Wild goes on a new mission each month to restore ecosystems and change the world for the better. Whether it's planting trees, reintroducing animals to forests where they once thrived, or using drones to study blue whales, Planet Wild is making a real difference for nature preservation. And your money doesn't just disappear in a black hole. They document all their missions with videos on YouTube and on their app. In one of their latest missions, they've teamed up with people in the United States to restore the grass and biodiversity in the Wild West to make it, well, wild again. They're removing fences and protecting and monitoring the animals such as bisons. And you can become part of it. By joining Planet Wild, you can see your contribution make a real impact within a month. You know me, I'm a very output-oriented person and I really like their community-based hands-on approach. They make a real difference and you can see it. If you need a little more encouragement, if you're among the first 200 people to sign up with my QR code, code or link, I'll pay your first month. And don't worry that you'll get stuck with them. You can cancel your membership at any time. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.